Lord, we come before you humbly and uh, as weak human beings and help us to hear your word this morning and help me to uh, speak your word, uh, the word that you want to give to people, that the water for thirsty people. In your name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, and I meant to mention, you know, uh, I know that Jeremy, Professor Jeremy, uh, mentioned, uh, he, he sent some scriptures and some hymns, because this is the time of Lent. How many people know what Lent is? Now basically, Lent is to, to think about the time before Jesus died, and then, you know, he died, and we, we celebrate Easter, uh, and he rose again from the dead, but, you know, it's like 40 days before uh, the death of Jesus, and we, we, we commemorate, you know, his life and his ministry and his sacrifice for us. So we want, in the next few, couple Sundays, you know, we want to really take time, you know, some people fast, and some people during this time, they, they maybe pray more or sacrifice something in their lives. To, to be honest, we should do that all the time. I mean, every Sunday we're, we're thinking about the death and resurrection of Christ, but, but this is a special time. So, in fact, we may even, uh, next week or after, I think we should try to have communion. So we'll try to figure out how to do that. Uh, all right, so now we're looking at Psalm 37, and she read Psalm 37 for us. And I was thinking about this because last week I talked about... Second Chronicles. Does anybody remember Second Chronicles, the verse Second uh, Chronicles sixteen nine? Anybody remember the verse? We didn't spend a lot of time memorizing it. I don't have it completely memorized, but it says something like this: The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth, or the whole earth, uh, you know, looking for those who are committed to Him. And actually, it says so that he can strengthen those who are fully committed to him. All right. And I've been thinking a lot about this, and I forgot to mention last week. Last week I mentioned a, a, a word, a Hebrew word, shalem. Shalem. It sounds very similar to shalom. The word shalom means like peace and welfare and security in God. In God. It's in God, right? And uh, the word shalem sounds similar, but shalem is the word that means to be fully committed. Fully committed. So uh, shalem means like, I am completely committed to God. My heart is committed to God. And then I can receive God's shalom. God's shalom. His welfare, and it also means completeness and fullness, and security, and prosperity in God. So I think it's kind of interesting. We've got these two words that sound similar. And then last week I mentioned Psalm 37. So could you, could somebody put the scripture up? Where's the scripture? And I want us to just look at a few points from the scripture. Um, I won't read it all again. But it says, do not fret because of evil men, nor be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. And then it goes on, trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord, verse 4. 5, commit your way to the Lord. And then also verse 7 says, be still before the Lord. We're going to talk about some points uh, related to this. And uh, maybe three points. We're going to talk about delight in God. Then we're going to talk about, you know, it says we will receive desires that we have. But the Bible talks about, you know, there's evil desires and good desires. Right? And so we're going to talk about deceptive desire, problems with desires. And then we're going to talk about good desires and following God, having devoted desires. So we could say three Ds. Delight. Deceptive desires, devoted desires, something like that, D's, right? Now, I, want, I was thinking about a story, that, uh, a, a, a pastor that I knew, 
Years ago, I lived in Minnesota in the United States. And there's lots of youth ministry in Minnesota. There's Young Life and Campus Crusade, Youth for Christ and various Christian groups, and lots of churches have really good youth programs. Uh, there was a youth speaker named Bill Crawford, and he worked for Youth for Christ, which is part of the Billy Graham Association. Anyway, he eventually uh, worked at some churches in my hometown, in my church, um, but he told the following story. He went as a university student to Westmont College, which is a Christian college in California, and he was a soccer player, he was a young Christian, like many of you university students, and uh, the first few weeks of school, he was going to the lunchroom, and he met this beautiful woman. In fact, I, I think I even remember her name. Her name was something like uh, Jill Johnson or something like that. He said, this woman was gorgeous, beautiful, attractive, and he was introduced to her. And, or he, he actually went out of his way to meet her, right? He wanted to date her. He ended up eating lunch with her, ended up eating lunch with her every day. He would meet her after class, and he would help carry her books. Have you ever done that? For, have you guys ever done that for some woman, some young woman? He would carry her books, and he couldn't wait to meet her. He couldn't wait to meet her. Every morning, he'd get up, I have to go, go to class, I have to have classes with her. I have to meet her, I have to, you know, we'll go out and do some things. I hope, you know, he was hoping that she would come and see him play soccer and so forth. And it was interesting, he told this story, I heard this story several times, and then he would say something like this, Do you desire to be with God in the same way that you would desire to be with a girlfriend or a boyfriend? You know, it's a very interesting question, because... You know, I'm the type of person who would say, look, it's not the same, you know. God is not a beautiful woman. <laughs> you know, or you might say, God is not a handsome man or attractive guy. It's just not the same, you know. I can't even see God. You know, he's invisible. But the truth is, you know, would you, do, do you, and I, I'm challenged by this, do I get up every day and say, God, I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to pray with you with you and, and, and listen to your voice. Uh, in, the, in Psalm 37, it says, delight. Delight. Now, some of us, we enjoy coming and we, we enjoy singing songs. I really believe a lot of Koreans really delight in singing praise, praise songs, right? Uh, some people get up early in the morning and go for prayer, 5.30, 4.30, whatever, early in the morning before work and want to be with God. I think Korean people are known for that, right? and all-night, Friday-night prayer, and things like that. But we have to constantly ask ourselves, I know I have to ask myself, am I, do I find delight in God? I mean, is He, you know, the Bible says, love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and your strength, right? And then love your neighbor as yourself, the two commandments. So do you delight to be with God every day? And I've been kind of wrestling with this. Um, you know, delight, like many of us say, I really delight to go to Baskin Robbins and have ice cream. How many of you like chocolate ice cream? <laughs> Vanilla ice cream? That's plain, but some people like that. Strawberry ice cream. Or, of the 31 flavors, what ice cream do you like? Like, there's lots of flavors. But, it's not, you might say that ice cream is not the same as desiring God, but in another sense it really is, you know. Um, here it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, I be, I'll be honest with you, when I first came to Handong, one of the professors told me that in some Korean translations, it's sort of translated like, you will get all your desires if you follow God, or something like that which I think can be a distortion. You know, a lot of times we think, if we follow God, we'll just get everything that we want. We'll get a nice car, we'll get a nice spouse, we'll have nice kids, nothing will happen to us, we'll have a nice church, we'll have a good 
pastor, we'll have good missions, so we'll live in a nice place, and we just kind of want to put it all together. Right? Well, there are two extremes. There are two extremes. One extreme is to never feel that we can have any desires that are good, right? Uh, some Christians become very, very strict. And they just say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. And they wear very uh, plain clothing, like maybe a Buddhist monk. You know, Buddhist monks often wear the kind of, in Korea, wear the gray clothes. Um, the other extreme, though, one extreme is to deny all desires or try to deny all desires. The other extreme, of course, is to have a little bit too much of a sense of everything on this earth is going to be wonderful and great and I'm going to have a fantastic business and I'm going to be CEO of a company and I'm going to make lots of money and I'm going to have a wonderful family. Well, some of these things God wants to give us, okay, of course. And it does say that. Now, there might be two ways to describe this, though. You know, take delight in the Lord first, right? Really delight in Him. You know, want to meet Him each day. Want to have lunch with Him every day. Uh, want to learn from His Word every day. Meditate on His Word. And I'm really trying to work on this. You know, I'm, I've been a Christian for a while, but I'm not really good at listening to God. But verse 7, it says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. You know, we need to be still... This morning we can do that, but other times we need to be still before God. And we know in the Bible there's another place where it says God speaks with a still, small voice. I think to Elijah, right? So all of us should be thinking, you know, how can I delight in the Lord and always want to be with Him, no matter what? And then it says He will give you the desires of of your heart. Now, I, I've been wrestling this for a long time. Does this mean that God gives me all my desires? Probably not. Does it mean that God only gives me strict and difficult desires? Probably not. Right? But we could say this the more we desire to be with God, you know, Jesus was always doing what the Father told him to do and sought God in the desert. The more we want to be with God, the more His desires become our desires, but also we know how to follow Him for the right desires. And many of those desires are good, are really good things, like family and marriage and job and so forth. But delighting in God comes first. I've never been more convinced of that. So in this first part we can say, you know, first of all it says, don't be envious of evil people. And I have to be honest with you, it's not just talking about people who murder or people who are corrupt with money or something like that, you know, evil dictators or gangsters or something like that. I believe evil people can be very nice people on the outside. They can be very successful people. They can be musicians and actors and rich people who own companies who wear a nice suit, and uh, you know, not, not everyone is like that is evil, but I think a lot of times young people, we look at Michael Jackson or we look at some other Korean talent, and we say, oh, I want to be like them. They're really talented, and they're really famous, and they make lots of money, and... but some of those famous people are evil. <laughs> Actually, the Bible says we're all evil, we're all sinners, but... Some of those people are rejecting Christ and will reject Christ and they're somewhat successful in their area, but they're rejecting God. They're not speaking at all for God. Um, but we should not worry about them, really. We should try to, you know, if we can, witness to them. But we just don't worry. We shouldn't be envious of those people. Because a lot of people are rejecting God and they have lots of money and lots of success and they, they do well on TV or in movies, but they're going to lose it all. Unless they come to Christ, they're just going to be outside of God's uh, presence, which is really sad. So we don't worry about that, but we pray for them, right? And anyway, 
When we delight in the Lord, it says several things. You know, trust in the Lord. We need to trust. A trusting relationship. You know, I don't always trust God. <laughs> I don't. I have to work at this every week. Do I trust God with what He's telling me? <laughs> delight yourself in the Lord. You know, delight is like enjoying a good meal. Delight is like going to a soccer game and enjoying the soccer game. Um, delight, for some of you, might be doing video games, right? Or, or playing music. A lot of, we have a lot of people who are really great at playing music. Um, commit your way to the Lord. I've never been more convinced. That what I, the one thing I want you to do this morning, and you should do it every Sunday, right? is say, have I committed everything to God? Everything. My marriage, my future spouse, my family, my future family, my job, my future job. Have you committed everything, every desire to Him? Now, I really believe you can't escape desires. You cannot escape desires. Desires are in everything we do. You know, if I get up here to speak and I say, okay, I think God wants me to help, that's a desire. If you help in the back room, that's a desire. If you decide you're going to get married, that's from desire. If you just study the Bible, it's hopefully desire God gave you to study the Bible. But we also have bad desires. You know, the Bible says that the world has corrupt desires. Paul says his body, his mind was corrupted by evil desires, but the Holy Spirit inside of him gave him new desires. And that's where, you know, we're constantly saying, God, give me the new desires. And sometimes churches, I think, and pastors make it sound like, well, if you have God's desires, you're going to go to a far-off country and be a missionary and sacrifice for God, like Mother Teresa. Well, some people will, and some people will find desire in that. They will enjoy it, actually. Uh, but God may just say, I, I'm going to give you some desires to do things in Pohong. Uh, we often say, bloom where you're planted, you know. Grow where you're planted. We're planted in Pohang. So what desires is God giving you uh, now? But, you know, there can be very deceptive uh, desires. Now, by the way, um, the word desire can be a noun, like a thing, or it could also be a verb, I desire something. Uh, God desires things. God desires us to be with Him. God desires us to grow.